Welcome to Module 1, Lesson 3. Let's get started. Today, our goal is to be able to learn that the factors in a multiplication expression represent the number of groups and the size of the group. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently. Fluently means with ease, quickly, correctly. We will use math in many real life situations. We will know that we are successful when we can draw a number bond to represent the factors. What is a number bond? A number bond is a math model that illustrates the part-part-whole relationship. The product is the whole or the total in a multiplication equation. In the number bond, the product goes at the top. The factors in a multiplication equation are the two parts. They have legs from the product down to the factors. So here we have the multiplication equation. 2 times 5 equals 10. Now we know that the product is always after the equal sign in the equation. So that number 10 goes at the top of the number bond. The two factors are 2 times 5. Now you'll notice that I have a 5 in each leg of the number bond. I don't have a 2 and a 5. I have a 5 and a 5. Two fives. Two groups of five. This is a three by four array. It has three rows of four. One, two, three rows. One, two, three, four in each row. The multiplication equation would look like this. Three groups of four equal 12. Let's check that out. We have three groups of four. Let's skip count. 4, 8, 12. Let's draw a number bond to match the array. It should look like this. The 12 is the product. It goes on top. There are three groups of four, so there are three legs with four in each group, three groups of four. Here's a different array. How many rows are in this array? One, two, three, four, five rows. Answer, there are five rows. Notice that I've put a red box around each row so that you can see that each row represents a group. So there are five groups. How many apples are in each row? Let's see, one, two. It's an equal number of two apples in each group. Answer, there are two apples in each row. 
Notice how I've put a box vertically. The vertical group is called a column. That is the second factor in a multiplication equation. There are five rows of two, and we can express that as five times two. Let's write a multiplication equation and draw a number bond to match the array. So we have five groups of two. We need to know what the product is, right? Because we're looking for a multiplication equation. So let's count by twos five times. Ready? Two, four, six, eight, ten. This is our number bond. The 10 is the product. It goes at the top. The twos are the columns. That's how many in each group. And there are five groups of two. So I have five legs going to five circles with two in each circle. Let's count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10 equals 12. This matches our equation. Five groups of two equals 10. Let's write a multiplication equation and draw a number bond to match this array. So the first number is a four. There are four rows, one, two, three, four rows. The second factor is a three. That stands for how many in each column? One, two, three, four. There are four in each column. So four times three. The product is 12. Let's count by threes to see if we get 12. Three, six, nine, 12. Yes, that 12 is the product. So that goes at the top. The three is how big the groups are. So there are threes in each circle and there are four circles to correspond with four rows. Four groups of three equals 12. We have an array, we have a number bond, and we have a multiplication equation, which are all representing the same thing. Let's move on to our read, draw, write question. So this one we'll do together. Remember, when we read, draw, write, we read the question and pick out the most important information first. Then we draw a picture to help solve the problem. Now, unless the question specifically directs you to draw a specific model, it'll be up to you to decide what would be the perfect model. But it could be an array, a bar diagram, it could be any math model. The third step is to write the answer as a sentence. Remember, when we're answering a math question, we want to use our words to describe exactly how we arrived at our solution. Alex sees that a carton of eggs shows two rows of six eggs. I want to remember two rows of How many eggs are in Alex's carton? So that's the question I need to answer. How many eggs are in Alex's carton? So when I am wording my answer, when I'm typing it or writing it out, I wanna make sure that I have words from the question. So I don't wanna just write a number or just say the answer is, I want to say Alex has so many eggs in his carton. I know that because, and then explain how I got my answer. 
Next, it says use the RDW process, that's read, draw, write, and a number bond to show your solution. So here I'm at the draw a picture step and it's telling me to draw a number bond to show my solution. Let's go to our Jamboard. If you have access to Google at home, you can do this too. I'm just going to type in jamboard.google.com. Click on the plus sign to write a new Jamboard. And I'll go back to the question. Two rows of six eggs. So I'm going to just write one, two. So I remember to put two rows. And now I'm going to, just for fun, change the color of my pen. Six eggs in each row. One, two, three, four, five, So here we have my one row, but I need two rows. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the question that is being asked is how many eggs are in Alex's carton? How can I figure this out if I don't know my sixes? Well, the really neat thing about an array is you can just count each circle to see what the total is. So I know that my expression is going to be two times six, but I need to know the total, right? So I need this to be an equation. So I'm putting an equal sign. So let's just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 2 times 6 equals 12. Now I'm not done yet, am I? I need to actually type an answer to the question. The question was, how many eggs are in Alex's carton. There are 12 eggs in Alex's carton. I found my answer by drawing an array with two rows of six. I counted the circles in my array and found that two times six equals twelve. So here we have a nice, long, juicy answer. And now I've completed the RDW or read, draw, write process for answering. So the answer is, Alex has 12 eggs in his carton. I solved by multiplying the number of rows by the number in each row so two times six equals 12. So there are a few different ways you could word this. You want to put it in your own words. If you don't want to write so many words and you can say it more concisely or with fewer words, that's fine. If you want to give even more explanation, that's fine. Really, it's up to you to decide how to answer the question to the best of your ability. Okay, let's move on. This is your read, draw, write question. You're going to use the strategies that you learned today to answer the question on your own. 
You can do this on paper and pencil at home or in your classroom. You can do it on a dry erase board. You can go to the Google Jamboard if you'd like, and I will leave a link below if you want to click directly on the Jamboard link to open a Jamboard, given that you have access to Google at home or at school. Okay, so I'm going to read the question for you, and then you can work on it on your own, and the answer will be in the box below. Abby arranges all of her erasers into three rows of five. How many erasers does Abby have in all? Draw a number bond where each part represents the number of erasers in one row. Okay, go do your best and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.